Hello wonderful people. Today we're going to be looking at how we can use Doctrine fixtures inside of our Symphony 7 application. Here we are on the website. Let's jump in. So first off we need to copy this and head over to the project. Hit that in and install. And there we go. Okay so now we can go over to our uh, data fixtures uh, directory that was just created by running that command and as we can see in here um, it's not actually doing anything but it's it's trying to create a new product right so um, now we need to figure out what we're going to actually create a fixture for um, so we have an event an event participant and this takes an event an owner and a target so would need to have at least one user um, uh, for to create an event participant and this also has a user as well so we would need at least one user for this whole whole thing so um, let's first create an user um, fixture so we'll change the name of the app uh, to user um, and then we will uncomment this okay so new user, da da, and we can change that to user. Right. So first off, let's just go back over to the user object, and inside of here, we need to fix some things. Actually, we just need an email. I'm just thinking about it because um, the password we will set separately um, because we don't want to take it in as a as a constructor argument to create the object. Okay, that should do. Um, so now if we go over here, we should get it asking for an email. If we use the new syntax, we can have named parameters. So the email address we can then figure out. Okay, so now we need to create a private method. Let's call this um, get user data, like so, and that will return an array like so return and then inside of here we can create our user objects or well array okay so now we've created three test users with all the same password so I don't forget um, so now back into this uh, load method here we need to um, say this get user data as data like so and now we can pop um, the uh, creation of the user object in there and then we can uh, put in the email like so okay great but now this is where it gets interesting we want to add a reference because we're going to need to grab this user object later right in another fixture so we can give it a name and we can give it an object so the object we're going to give it is the user and the name we're going to give it is actually we'll give it the email address as the as the name because that should be unique anyway right um, so we can do that um, and we also need to set the user's password but we're going to need to hash that so uh, let's um, in the constructor private read only uh, was it user password hasher interface that's the one uh, user password hash okay so now we can say user password hash hash password now we pass in the user user and then I think it's the plain password yes and then we can access the data array again and we access the password and now this should be the hashed password like so and now we can then access the user set password like so great so now this should persist and it will create three users for us fantastic okay onward and upward so we'll create another uh, PHP class here we're going to create the event uh, fixtures or oh, actually tell you what we will use the command line because why not 
Um, so we'll say make fixture, fixture, like so. And then the name of the fixture is event fixtures, like so. Ooh. And there we go, it should create that for us. Dependent fixture interface, like so. And now it complained that we are missing a stub, so add that in. And this will return an array. And let's just add in the typing there, return typing. So this will depend on the user fixtures class, like so. Now inside of the, the load uh, method, we can uncomment this and say we want a new event. Um, and this is going to be called event, like so. Um, now we can do the same as we did in the last um, fixture. Say so get event data, and then this will return an array. Uh, something I do that if uh, if it gets too large to exist in here, I create another uh, folder called data, and then create a class, um, generally an invocable class, um, that you can then call or you can inject or how, you know, you can, there are so many ways of doing it. But um, but yeah, if it just gets too large to be inside of this method, that's one way of doing it. Um, so in here, um, right, so now we need to figure out what does, what do we need for an event? We need event, we need a title, uh, we need a start at, we need an end at, we need an owner, uh, we need an address, a latitude, and a longitude. Okay. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And that's about it. So if we do that, there we go. We can do something like that. There we go. Speed things up a little bit. Um, okay. Oh, no, I forgot something. Uh, take away the don't need that, there we go, okay. Okay, so now we need to create the longitude and latitude. Um, so let's just add in a very quick um, random decimal uh, generator. Um, and we'll just call that. I'm not gonna bore you with the details of how it works because it's just very simple. Um, so we'll say the min will be uh, 10 and the max will be um, 50. And we'll use the same for the longitude. Basically, we just want a random integer. Uh, no, not a random float in that value or decimal in this situation. Um, we can also uh, quickly add in a return type, which would be a f integer. Oh, it is an integer. Interesting. Um, hmm. Right, so there we go. we can now create events. So we have one event being created at the moment, so we need to make more. Let's now, that's that. Okay, so now we have three users created. Now we need to, um, sorry, not three users, we have th So now we have three events created. Now we need to loop over them. So this get event data as um, as data. And then inside of here, we can create the new event like so. So the title is going to be data title and so on and so forth until your mind is broken like that end at data end at oops there we go and the next one is what let's go for address for now okay address address longitude data longitude 
latitude data uh, there we go, latitude and the owner okay so for the owner we're not going to put it in here um, because well, we need to sort the arguments there we go um, so the owner is going to be something different we're going to have to say this get reference and we need to access the data owner because that will be the uh, essentially the uh, email address of the um, person that owns this event and now essentially we'll have the owner um, object which should be created in this user fixture so now we can say underneath here event um, or we can actually just tell um, PHP storm that this will be a user object owner so it knows that when we um, set owner it knows it's the correct type otherwise it, it, it will return something that we don't know right so there we go um, and then it persists it and that's that and one last thing before we leave this is we need to set this um, add reference um, we're going to set this to the sure okay we'll just use the title actually um, for setting the reference and then the object is the event like so okay so that means we can access this event object in another um, fixture so next we need to create an event partici fixture um, or is it fixtures yes it's pluralized okay like so um, we can actually just copy that over like so and then event fix there we go done um, don't need that uh, we will need that uh, like so and it won't be user data it'll be something else so inside of here we can say um, so really we need the event data and we need the user data as well inside of here so um, essentially we're going to need some identifier for the event fixture such as a title which is what we set the um, the identifier as in the um, in the event fixture itself and then we also need an owner and we can use the owner's email address so I don't think James has been used for anything at the moment, uh, like so. So we have the event title and the owner. That's pretty much what we need for the um, event participant. So here we can say get event participant data, like so. And that's it. OK, so in here, event participant equals new event participant and it accepts the event so data title ah, but so here now we need to get the the event so event equals this get reference and now inside of here we can use data title like so so now we can pass in that event. Um, but just telling PHP Storm that that is an event object so that we get auto completion on it if we need to access it later, like so. OK, um, so now we need to do the same thing for the user. So this will now be a user object and we'll call it uh, owner and just do that and change that to owner so now uh, we can say owner owner and finally we 
we can add in a type. So the type is using an event enum, participant enum, um, which, woo, if we just go back, we can add that in like so. Um, but there's also something that I've noticed here is that there's actually two users. There's the, um, the owner of it and then the target. So I think actually the, um, the target is uh, the person who's been invited and the owner is the person who's created it. Um, so in this situation, we'll actually need two users. Um, so here we'll need the target as well, like so. Um, so it, they can't be the same thing. So um, in this situation, we will say uh, Tom, I think Tom created nearly all of them. So um, we can have that Tom invites James. And then that means that we'll need to uh, get another um, user object, but this time using the target um, like that. Um, and then inside of here, just say, uh, oops, I forgot to change the name, target, uh, target like so. Okay, so now we need to sort the arguments. And now we will need to add the event, part uh, event participant to the event, add event participant like so. And then we will need to persist this um, ah, no, never mind. Uh, sorry, manager persist um, event participant like so. Um, we could also, if we were being sneaky, yes, we have uh, cascade persist on here because we've added this in. We could actually just call uh, persist on the event object itself. And then because this has been added in, it will then cascade and persist that. So that's quite useful. But there is one thing we're missing from here. And that is the uh, dependent uh, fixture interface. Um, so we need to add the method stub. Um, and this will be an array. And in here, we need to say that it's dependent on the user fixtures class and the event fixtures class, like so, um, so that it will load after these have loaded, because otherwise we won't be able to access the um, the references that we're, we're calling to here. And I think we, did we do that in the event? Ah, okay, so it's, it's dependent on the user, because again, we're using that here um, when we get the uh, the user reference. So inside of the terminal on your Docker setup, inside of here, we can call doctrine fixtures load. However, we don't want to delete everything that's already in the database. We just want to append to it. So we can use the append flag. And uh, let's hit enter. And there we go. We have now loaded in the fixtures. So if we head over to the database and give it a refresh, we can see we've created uh, three new users. Uh, we also forgot to create the avatar. Um, and then if we go over to the events, we can see that there's Henry's birthday party, John's leaving party. And this is how we can use data fixtures in Symphony 7. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to check out my book. Use the QR code to find it. Have a good day.